you know what, Small? I think something really exciting is going to happen today. What's even more exciting than usual, Ben? Yes, really special. <coughs> oh, hang on. What's this? <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, hey, Small! Oh, oh. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our cafe. The best cafe in the world! Somebody's just left a letter out by the back door. Oh, oh, small! Just as I suspected, something extra fabo dabo exciting is happening. Oh, how exciting! Hello, everyone. Is it from you? Huh? So who's it from? Oh, oh, oh small! I don't believe this. Oh, this is brilliant. Who's it from, Ben? Oh, oh, small! It's from Old King Cole. It's an invitation to his party. Ooh -hoo. Ooh -hoo. It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, please come to my party at the palace. The palace? Whoa! Please think of a game that we can all play from Old King Cole. Brilliant! I can't wait for the party! But what sort of game can we take? Hmm. Oh, we could take throw the custard tart. We could make lots of custard tarts and then wee splat. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea to throw custard tarts at old King Cole. What if he gets sticky blobs on his royal robes? That would never do. <laughs> hmm. Well, if we can't play throw the custard tart, we... Oh, we could play pass the parcel. But we don't have enough time to make the parcel, Ben. Hmm, you're right. No, we don't. Come on, Small. We'll have to think about this later. Sounds like we've got a customer. I'm on my way. Woohoo! Woo! Who's in the cafe today, Small? Well, it's someone who's big and hairy. <laughs> big and hairy? Hmm. You'll have to give us another clue, Small. She's big and strong, and her ears are long. So she's big and hairy and strong, and her ears are long. Hmm. And here's one more clue. She says, ee aw, ee aw. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. It's Daphne the donkey. You're right, Ben. I wonder what a donkey would like to eat. I think it's time to look in my book. <laughs> We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. One day I decided to go to the seaside. It was a lovely day and there were donkeys on the beach giving children rides. They were having great fun. Then I spotted a very sad-looking donkey. She was staring into a shop window. The shop was selling colourful rock, candy floss and boiled sweets. The donkey told me her name was Daphne and she just loved looking at all the colourful sweets in the shop. Oh, they looked so inviting, so pretty and shiny, she said. But Daphne was a clever little donkey. She knew that the sweets would be bad for her teeth. So all she could do was stare at the lovely colours. Then I had an idea. I took Daphne along the street to another shop window, a shop that sold fruit and vegetables. Oh, how pretty, said Daphne. All those lovely shapes and colours. I went into the shop and bought some vegetables. First, I gave Daphne a stick of celery. It's so munchy and crunchy and green exclaimed Daphne. Munch, 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 munch. Next, I gave Daphne a red pepper. I love the colour red and it's so shiny. She gobbled it up, licking her lips. Finally, I handed her a long, juicy carrot. Scrummy, yumptious, so pretty and orange. Eeyaw, eeyaw, Daphne. That was my favourite. I didn't know about this shop with the lovely colourful vegetables in the window and they're really good for my big teeth. 
I knew something else that would be good for her teeth. A toothbrush. She could keep her teeth extra healthy by brushing them after every meal. To say thank you, Daphne took me for a donkey ride on the beach. It was brilliant! Woohoo! Little Cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure! So Daphne the donkey discovered the yumminess of vegetables thanks to you, Little Cook! Way! And now she's eating lots of vegetables. Her teeth are staying nice and healthy too. But we still don't know what to cook for her. Hmm. Oh! <sighs> I know! Big Cook's Big Cookery Book! Of course! The Big Cookery Book! There's recipes for everything in there! And where do we look for things to cook? In the book! In the book! In Big Cook's Book! Hey, look at this! It's perfect! Munchy Crunchy Carrot! A donkey's dream! Come on then, little cook! You read out the ingredients and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need onion. Onion over here. In there. Yep, got the onion. Carrot. Here we go as well. Carrot. Donkeys love carrots. Celery. Celery in the fridge. There we go. Nice and green. Got the celery. Water. Oh, we can get that from the tap later. Vegetable stock cubes. Oh, that should be over in the cupboard. Here we go. Got those small. Olive oil. In the cupboard as well. Yep. And rice. Rice, rice. Oh, here we go. Basmati rice. Right. Everything we need for the recipe. Small. I've always wondered where basmati rice comes from. So have I. Well, why don't you whiz off and find out and I'll get everything ready. That's a great idea, Ben. See you later. <laughs> hey, why don't you come along too? Go small, go small, whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. I'm in India! These are fields where pure basmati rice is grown. These are the nursery fields. The man is planting rice seeds. When the seeds grow, the stalks are moved to water-flooded paddy fields. The plant is ready to pick. Once picked, the plant is banged against metal drums. This gets the rice out of the stalks. The rice is then loaded onto carts and taken to be sold. This man is checking the rice grain by rubbing it in the palm of his hand. The rice will be dried and then packed to be sent to the shops. I'd better get back to the cafe. I was wondering if old King Cole might want to play Keep the Balloon Up in the Air. Way! I'm back! And I found out all about Basmati rice. It grows in water-flooded fields. Oh, well, I never knew that. Ben, what are you doing with that balloon? Well, I thought we could teach old King Cole how to play Keep the Balloon Up in the Air. It's my favourite game, and whenever I play... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to tie the knot. <laughs> Ben, I think we better start cooking. You're right, little cook. Off we go. We're all ready, so take a look, and we will show you how to cook. The jelly boats and pirates go, princess pea pies, carrot cakes and fruity smiles, and envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. Cook, and he is small Friends in our cafe We cook for them all When your tummy Gets all rumbly You're ready for a treat You can make something Delicious to eat Have you cleaned the surfaces? 
Yes? Have you washed your hands? Yes! All, All clean and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to Munchy Crunchy Carrot? You do? There was onion. One finely chopped. Carrot. One medium sized. Chopped. Celery. One stick. Chopped. And the leafy bit is for the decoration. Water. One litre. Vegetable stock cubes. One. Olive oil. Two tablespoons. And rice. 125 grams. We're using basmati rice. Whoopee! Let's get started! I've heated one tablespoon of the oil in a frying pan. Now this is a job for your grown-up helper to do because it's a hob job. And remember, the hob is hot, hot, hot. When the oil is nice and hot, add the onion and cook it until it's nice and soft. Mmm! It's the smell of onion cooking again! Whoopee! Now I'm still trying to think of a game we can play at Old King Cole's party. Mmm, so am I. Oh, I know, I know! Musical chairs! When the music starts, you have to dance all around the chairs. And when the music stops, you have to sit on the nearest chair. But if you can't find a chair to sit on, it means you're out! <laughs> But kings don't usually sit on ordinary chairs, they sit on thrones. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Thinking up a party game for the king is more difficult than I thought. Now I've made a litre of vegetable stock by putting the stock cube into the boiling water. And I'm just giving it a final stir to get rid of all the lumps. There we go. Our onions are nice and soft now, so I'm going to pour the stock in. In it goes. And then add the rice. Bring it back to the boil. It'll take about 20 minutes to cook, so keep stirring it until all the water has been soaked up by the rice. This is ready now, so I'm going to take it off the heat, pop it down there, and then ask your grown-up helper to put the rest of the oil into another frying pan and heat it up. Then I'm going to fry the chopped celery and the chopped carrots. Don't add the leafy bit of the celery, because we'll need that later. Mmm, the sizzling now. I like the word sizzle, because it sounds like it's sizzling. Sizzle. <laughs> yes, it does, doesn't it? I've never thought of it like that before. Sizzle. Hoo -hoo. Keep the celery and the carrots sizzling away until they go soft. That's looking good. It smells good too. Oh yes, it does smell delicious, doesn't it, Small? Right, now it's time to mix the carroty mixture with the rice. So, I'm going to pour that in there. There we go. And then bring this over to the heat. Give it a stir around. We still haven't thought of a party game. Does that mean we're not allowed to go to Old King Cole's party? Well, not unless we think of something quick, Small. You keep thinking, and I'll finish our munchy crunchy carrot. OK. Hmm. It's cooked now, so our munchy crunchy carrot is almost ready. We just need to spoon the mixture onto a plate and then mould it into a carrot shape. That's a good carroty shape, Ben, but it would look even better if you put the celery leaves on top. Ah, yes. Here we go. In there. And there. Oh, great. It looks just like a real carrot. 
That looks delicious. Let's get it through to Daphne the donkey while it's still hot. Uh, Small, weren't you supposed to be thinking up a party game for us? You haven't forgotten, have you? Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> OK, one munchy crunchy carrot coming through. There, all done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! <laughs> Wash, wipe, scrub and clean. Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben and my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. Tidy all the bits and bob, the things that help us do our job. Ingredients well put away, ready for use another day. Pots and pans will start to smell, if we don't wash them really well. And now it's clear, let's all smile, we'll be finished in a little while. All around, up and down, we've got the cleanest cafe in town. Well, we're all dressed up for the party. But we still haven't thought of a game to play. Don't worry, Ben. We'll just have to keep on thinking. And look! Here comes the plate. Oh, yes! It looks like Daphne enjoyed her munchy, crunchy carrot. Look, Small. She's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? <laughs> Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small. My munchy crunchy carrot was scrumptious! Woohoo! I heard you were having some trouble thinking of a game to play at Old King Cole's party. To say thank you, I've made you the perfect game. Stick the tail on the donkey. Have fun from Daphne the donkey. Small, look at this! Oh, oh, oh. She's given us the perfect game. Whee! Whoopee! Stick the tail on the donkey! That's brilliant! Come on then, Small, let's give it a try. I'll put the blindfold on. OK, I remember this one. Now, first of all, you have to start spinning. OK, I'm spinning, Small. Now stop and stick the tail on the donkey. I've done it. I've done it, Small. Oh, where's the tail? I thought I'd stuck it on the donkey. It's stuck on me. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> now I've got a top hat and tail. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to practice. Come on, Ben. Let's go to the palace for the party. Hey, hey see you soon. See you soon. Big cook, little cook. We'll cook for everyone. Oh. Oh, hello. Welcome to our cafe. The best cafe in the world. I've just been cutting the grass, but it's going to take forever because the lawnmower's broken and I can't find Small. Have you seen him? Small? Small? Hey, why don't you shout with me? One, two, three, Small! Oh, I can't find Small. I think he's lost. Oh. Whoa. Oh, hello, Ben. What's the matter? Oh, there you are. I was worried. Whatever are you doing? Oh, I'm just having a bit of a rest after all that grass cutting. All that grass cutting? Oh, yes. Look. One blade of grass. Is that all you've done? One blade of grass? Well, it might be one blade of grass to you, my friend, but to me it's like a tree. We'll have a lawn up to our ears in no time at this rate. Well, maybe you shouldn't have broken the lawnmower. Well, I didn't break the lawnmower. It just got old. That's all, Small. <coughs> Aha! Come on. Customer Small. I'm on my way. <coughs> and who's our customer today, Small? You'll never guess. It's Old MacDonald. Old MacDonald? You know Ben, the farmer from the farm down the road. 
He keeps chickens and pigs and the most beautiful brown horse ever. Well, we'd better make something a bit special for him then. Yes. But what? Something to do with animals. Moo! <laughs> Can you guess which animal I am? A cow! Shh, Small, I'm trying to think. Moo! Oink, oink. What on earth are you doing, Small? I'm making farm animal noises, Ben. Farms are full of animals. I think it's time to look in my book. <laughs> We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. One day I was going for a walk when I heard a lot of noise. It was a farmyard full of howling animals. They were neighing and mooing and barring and barking and grunting and meowing. It was the most dreadful noise I had ever heard. I just had to go and find out what the problem was. The horse told me that everyone on the farm was really, really hungry because the farmer hadn't fed them that morning. Not all the animals were there though. The chickens were missing. So I went to see if I could find them. But did I get a big surprise when I got to the chicken coop? All the hens were busy clucking and fussing round the cockerel. The poor cockerel was lying in bed looking really ill. He'd lost his voice. All he could say was, Urgh, 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 instead of, cock doo doo How terrible! A cockerel without a cock doo doo I soon realised what the problem was. The farmer and his wife were still fast asleep. No wonder the farmer hadn't woken up. You see, it's the cockerel's job to wake the farmer up. Every day, at dawn, the cockerel stands on top of the chicken house and sings his wake-up call as loud as he can. cock a doo doo cock doo doo Then the farmer wakes up and knows it's time to feed all the animals. But because the cockerel had lost his voice, the farmer hadn't woken up. That's when I did my famous cockerel impression. cock a doo 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 cock a doo 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 That soon woke them up. At last the animals would be fed. Little Cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure! cock a doodle doo <laughs> Way! I'm back, Ben! There we go. The farmer and his wife rushed out of bed, and soon they'd fed all the animals. I bet you know exactly what to cook for old MacDonald, then. Oh, I've forgotten about that. Let's see. It can't be that difficult. Oh, I know something that might help us. It's a song about our customer, old MacDonald. That's sure to help us. Will you join in? Goody, I know this one, too. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O And on his farm he had some chicks, E-I-E-I-O With a cluck cluck here and a cluck cluck there Here a cluck, there a cluck, everywhere a cluck cluck Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O and on his farm he had some pigs, E-I-E-I-O With an oink oink here and an oink oink there Here a oink, there a oink, everywhere an oink oink Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O Oh, I love that song, Ben. Me too. There are so many things that come from a farm, aren't there? Yeah, but we have to think of something for Old MacDonald in our cafe. But what? <gasps> I know! Big Cook's Big Cookery Book! Of course! The Big Cookery Book! There's recipes for everything in there! And where do we look for things to cook? In the book! In the book! In Big Cook's Book! Aha! Uh -huh. Look! The perfect thing! 
farmyard smoothies. Mmm, milky drinks that look like animals. Whoopee! Hooray! You read out the ingredients, little cook, and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need a banana. OK. Banana, honey. That's honey, not bunny, Ben. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> honey. Yoghurt, and most important of all, milk. Yoghurt and, um, oh. Are we out of milk? I'm afraid so. Oh, well, that scrambled our plans. What are we going to do now, Small? We can't make smoothies without milk. Not to worry, Ben. I'll whiz off and get some. Oh, Small, you're the poppin' popcorn, and I'll get everything ready. I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Hey, why don't you come along too? Go small, go small, whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. Ooh, I wonder if I'm in the right place. Look at the lovely green grass and, oh, what's that? Something's eating the grass. It's a cow. There's lots of black and white cows. Moo! <laughs> Here comes the farmer on his tractor. He's rounding up the cows because twice a day they have to be milked. <laughs> Moo to you too! This is the milking parlour. Come on, in you go. The farmer attaches suction pipes to the cow's udders. The milk is taken from the cow. Wow, look at all that milk. The milk then goes to a factory where it's heated and cooled and put into cartons. At home, we keep milk in the fridge so it stays fresh. Milk is tasty and very good for you. I like to drink milk too, or have it on my cereal at breakfast. I'd better get some milk back to the cafe. See you later! There we are, all set and ready to go. All we need now 
is the milk. Way! I'm back, Ben. I've brought the milk fresh from the farm. Woohoo! Oh, nice and creamy. Lovely. We're all ready, so take a look and we will show you how to cook. The jelly boats and pirates gold, princess pea pies, carrot cakes and fruity smiles, and envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. Big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, all clean, clean and, and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember what we need for farmyard smoothies? You do? There was a banana, one sliced, honey, one teaspoon, yoghurt, one tablespoon, and last of all, milk, one cup. Whoopee! Let's get started! Now mash up the banana with a fork. In it goes. There we are. Oh, mash it up. Mash, 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 mash. I like this bit. Oh, there we go. Now we're making a drink to remind old MacDonald of his farm. It's a yellow chip drink. There we go. Now we also need to make a paper head and tail for the drink. And my little chum here can take care of that. Okie dokie! <laughs> What noises do chicks make? I know. Cluck, cluck, cluck. Cluck, cluck, cluck. <laughs> OK. Now, to our mashed banana, we add our yoghurt. In it goes. Lovely. Our honey. There we are. Make it nice and sweet. All that in. And then finally, we put in the milk. And then mix it all together to make a lovely, thick banana drink. Mm, mix it up, mix it up. We just finished popping the rest into a glass. Oh, very nice. Doesn't that look good? Our drink's just about ready for Small's head and tail decoration. Small, how's this chick's face coming along? That's the face done. Now for the tail. Hoo hoo, yes, the tail. Hoo hoo. Buck, 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 buck. How is the tail? Cluck, 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 cluck. I've finished and I've stuck some tape on the back. Cluck, 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 cluck. Thank you, small. On we go. Now I just need a straw, please, small. Here you go, Ben. Oh, thank you. And there we are. One lovely chick drink. Cluck, cluck, cluck. Now, if you want to make a pink piggy smoothie, oink, 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 all you have to do is add strawberries instead of bananas. Come on, Ben. We'd better get that chick drink off to old MacDonald. It looks so good. Right-o. One farmyard smoothie coming through. Oh, there. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean up and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean. Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben and my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. Tidy all the bits.
bits and bobs The things that help us do our jobs Ingredients we'll put away Ready for use another day Pots and pans will start to smell If we don't wash them really well And now it's clear, let's all smile We'll be finished in a little while All around, up and down We've got the cleanest cafe in town comes the plate. And what's this? Old McDonald's left us a note, Small. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, the best smoothie I've ever tasted. And what brilliant heads and tails. <laughs> Just like being back on the farm. He likes it. He really likes it. And there's something else, Small. Well, what? It says, I've heard you were having problems with your lawn mower, so as a little thank you, I've left you something to cut the grass for you. Something to cut the grass? A lawn mower? <laughs> oh my small! Old McDonald's left us a note and a goat! A goat? Look at this small! Her name's Alice and she'll have your lawn looking lovely in no time. Well, mash my potatoes. If that doesn't beat everything, our very own goat. See you soon. <laughs> See you soon. Big cook, little cook. We'll cook for everyone. Ooh, new shoes, new shoes. Look at my brand new shoes. Oh, there we are. Beautiful. <laughs> Oh, I'm all soaked. It's raining. Oh, dear. Oh, hello. Welcome to our cafe. The best cafe in the world. Just the place to come on a rainy day like today. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, what do you think? I think you should take your shoes off the counter, Ben. You never, ever, ever put shoes on the kitchen worktop. It'll go dirty. No, they won't, Small. Not today. These are my brand new squiggy clean sandals. Perfect for walking along the beach. Which is where I'm off to right now. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. Today is not the day to go to the beach with new sandals. They'll get ruined. Oh, I was really looking forward to standing on the sand and listening to the sea. Whoosh. Whoosh. Mm. Oh, come on, Ben. Cheer up. Hey, why don't we play a game before our first customer arrives? That might take your mind off the sea. It might. Hmm, what game to play? Oh, I know. We'll play a game called Which Shoes. It's a guessing game. It's brilliant. OK, I'll go first. Um, I'm a runner, and I run, run, run. Which shoes do I wear to have fun, fun, fun? Well, which shoes do runners wear? Oh, right, I, I, I guess do I. Oh, right. Um, OK, which shoes do runners wear? Which shoes do runners wear? Uh, do you know? Shout out the answer for me. Go on. Oh, I know, I know. Runners wear trainers. Right, first time, Ben. <laughs> right, OK, my go, my go. Um, right, yeah. I'm a dancer and I twizzle around on my twinkle toes. <laughs> which shoes do I need? Who knows? Who knows? Hmm. Do you know? Oh, I do. It's ballet shoes. Yeah, ballet shoes. I couldn't really wear these to the beach, could I? <laughs> oh, come on, Small. Sounds like we've got a customer. Oh. I'm on my way. Who is it today, Small? Well, she's wearing blue, and she's carrying a bucket and spade. And what shoes is she wearing? Blue trainers. Oh, I know who it is. I know. It's Little Betty Blue. She's here on holiday. You're right. Little Betty Blue lost a holiday shoe. What should Betty do? Give her another, just like the other, and then she can walk out in two. <laughs> so now we've got to decide what to cook for Little Betty Blue. I think it's time to look in my book. Well, 
We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. Little Betty and I were at the beach together yesterday. It was a lovely sunny day and Little Betty was wearing a pair of brand new shoes. I thought they looked so comfy. Will you take one off, Little Betty? I asked. It looks just the right size for me to sit in. And it was. She held me up in the air. It was just like being in an aeroplane. She cried as she whisked me round and round above her head. And we laughed and laughed. A family of crabs were watching. They all shouted, Can we have a go? But we were having too much fun to pay any attention. Then little Betty decided that we should build a sandcastle. So I got out of the shoe and started to help her. With one shoe on and one shoe off, Little Betty Blue filled her bucket with sand and we built the castle higher and higher. When the castle was finished, she put a beautiful little flag on the very top. There, she said, a castle fit for a little cook. But then she looked round and gasped. Her shoe had disappeared. Oh, not again, she wailed. I'm always losing my holiday shoe. But I had an idea where it might have gone. And I was right. The crabs were having their turn. This is just like being in a car, they cried. Broom, broom, or a brand new house. And they laughed and laughed. Little Betty really needed her shoe back. So I had to come up with one of my best ideas ever. I looked down the beach and saw the perfect thing. A big shell. The crabs were happy to swap the shoe for the shell. They got inside it and pretended it was a train, then a rocket and a boat. This is fun, they cried, and they laughed and laughed. Thanks, Little Cook Small. Our new shell is such fun, they called, and Betty and I made our way home. Betty was so happy to have her shoe back, and she said she'd never lose it again. Little Cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure. And Betty got her shoe back all because you had a brilliant idea, Small. Oh, well done, you. Wow! Well, thank you very much, Ben. So now you need to have a brilliant idea for what we can make for Little Betty Blue. Oh, yes. Another brilliant idea for Little Betty Blue. Hmm. Ooh. Ah. Oh. I know! Big Cook's Big Cookery Book! Of course, the Big Cookery Book! There's recipes for everything in there! And where do we look for things to cook? In the book! In the book! In Big Cook's Book! Woohoo! Oh, yes! Have I found the perfect thing or what? It's something to remind little Betty of all the fun she had at the seaside. Veggie sandcastles. Yippee! Well, you read out the ingredients, little cook, and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need an onion. Onion in the fridge. Over we go. One onion. Got that. A pepper. One pepper in there as well. Got that too, small. Frozen peas. Frozen peas in the freezer. There we are. Frozen peas, yep. Yeah. Turmeric. Turmeric. That turns the sand yellow. OK. So, turmeric to turn the sand yellow, but what are we going to use for sand, small? Long grain rice. Long grain rice, OK. And tomatoes. Tomatoes. Uh, we haven't got any tomatoes, small. Oh, no. Don't worry, small. We've got all the other ingredients. Hey, why don't you whisk off and find some? Oh, yes, of course. Hey, why don't you come along too? Off we go! Go small, go small, whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. Train! Choo choo! Oh, look at 
looks like I'm in the right place. Gosh, that's the biggest greenhouse I've ever seen. Let's go inside and see what's growing in the greenhouse. Come on. Oh, do you know what they are? They're tomatoes. And look, this man is picking them. The tomato plant grows out of the soil. And hundreds of tomatoes grow on its vines. When the tomatoes are young, they're green. And then they turn bright red when they're ready to eat. Ooh, lovely red juicy tomatoes. These tomatoes are being grown in a greenhouse because it's nice and hot and the warmth helps the tomatoes to grow. Ooh, it's too hot in here for me. I'd better dash. Oh, if only I could have gone to the beach. The waves lapping at the shore. Whoosh, whoosh. The sound of the sea. Whoosh, whoosh. Whee! I'm back! You can't dream about the sea now, Ben. I've got the tomatoes! Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Hoo! Wow! They're so lovely and red. I saw this man who was picking them. They grow on plants, you know. Lovely. Let's cook. We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. The jelly boats and pirates gold. Princess pea pies. Carrot cakes and fruity smiles. And envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. Cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, all clean, clean and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to veggie sandcastles? You do. There was an onion. Half chopped. A pepper. Half sliced. Frozen peas. Half a cup. Turmeric. One teaspoon. Long grain rice. 150 grams. And tomatoes. Four chopped. Whoopee! Let's get started! Right, Ben, you get going on the recipe while I make the flag for the top of the sandcastle. Now, I've heated some olive oil in a saucepan. Make sure you get your grown-up helper to do that for you. Shall I do it red or blue, Ben? Red. No, blue. No, both. Both! Now, put the onions... ...peppers... And the turmeric into the saucepan and give it a good stir for about five minutes. Shall I do it stripes or spots, Ben? Uh, stripes. No spots. No, do both. Stripes and spots. Okay, so it's red and blue, stripes and spots. Okay. This looks pretty good. Time to add the rice. And the tomatoes. And just enough water to cover them. And then we bring them to the boil. Ben! Ben, I've just had an idea! Why don't I draw a picture of little Bessie Blue in the middle of the flag? Oh, yes, Mole. That is a brilliant idea. Oh, I'm full of them today, aren't I? So it's red and blue, stripes and spots, with a picture of Little Betty Blue in the middle. Here goes! Aha! There we are. 
It's boiling now, so turn it down and let it cook slowly for 15 minutes until the rice is soft. Pop the lid on and now we have to do some waiting. Hmm. I'll set the timer. Oh yes, it looks just right. There we go. Now here's a little tip for you. If it looks a little bit dry, you can always put a little bit more water in. Now it's time to add the peas. Giving it a good stir. There we go. How's your flag coming, Small? Coming along, Ben. I've done the stripes, see, and the spots. Now all I've got to do is put little Bessie Blue in the middle. Good, because our veggie sandcastles will be ready very soon. There we are. Turn the heat down. Now, I've greased a beaker with a little butter, and I'm going to spoon in the mixture. There we go. A little more. Very nice. Press it down firmly with your spoon, and then leave it to cool for five minutes. Little Betty Blue is ready. And here's the best bit. I'm going to place the plate on top of the beaker, like that, and very carefully turn them over. There we go. And slowly remove the beaker. There we are. Ta-da! Oh, very nice. What do you think of that, Small? Fantastic! And it's about to get even better. I've stuck my flag on a straw so that you can put it in the middle of the sandcastle. I think of everything, don't I? As I said before, you're brilliant, Small. Quick, Ben, get it off to Bessie Blue now whilst it's still nice and warm. OK, then, here we go. One veggie sandcastle coming through. There. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean. Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben. And my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. Tidy all the bits and bobs, the things that help us do our job. Ingredients well put away, ready for use another day. Pots and pans will start to smell if we don't wash them really well. And now it's clear, let's all smile, we'll be finished in a little while. All around, up and down, we've got the cleanest cafe in town. Ah, here comes the plate. And she's left us a beautiful shell and a note, a postcard. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Let's see. It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, Thank you so very much for my delicious veggie sandcastle. It reminded me of all the fun I had with Little Cook Small on the beach. Woohoo! But because Big Cook couldn't come and missed out on all the fun, I'm giving him this shell. If you hold it up to your ear, you can hear something very special. Oh, Ben! Ben, isn't that kind? Well, what can you hear? Whoosh! Whoosh! Oh, Small, you'll never guess. I can hear the sea. Oh, so now I don't have to go to the beach in the rain after all. I can stay right here. Whoosh! Whoosh! See you soon! See you soon!